Hello and welcome to the Attendee Engagement Best Practices webinar hosted by Michelle Hardy, CEO of Meeting Sites Pro. During this pandemic, we have all pivoted to virtual meetings and so we are bringing on some experts to help us with attendee engagement practices. Without further ado, I will hand it over to Michelle to introduce us to our panel. Appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna bring Benji Harris back on from Song Division. I'm gonna bring Christine Iverson from Crow Practice, Lisa Jennings from Wildly Different, Tim Kerbavez from Enter Talon Entertainment AV. Kerbavaz, I said it wrong the first time. So Kerbavaz, um, we're gonna bring in Helen Taffet from Sensational Baskets. And that is our panel. So we're really happy to have you guys all on with us today. Thank you very, very much for being here. Make sure you're off mute so that um, when we're going to ask questions, you guys are able to answer them and then mute yourselves back again when um, when you're ready to answer. So thank you guys for being here. Really do appreciate it. I'm going to kick it off with um, Song Division. Benji, I'm going to ask you from other companies who inspire virtual engagement. Like, What's the main difference? Uh, the main difference is that, that we're using music and we're, we're using music in a way that nobody else is doing. Uh, secondly, we uh, use professional musicians. Uh, our Team USA MCs uh, have all toured with uh, music superstars. Like for me, I, I'm based in Nashville. So uh, I've been a uh, touring guitar player, if, if music fans out there. Uh, I play guitar for uh, Chris Young, uh, Cassidy Pope, Sam Hunt. These are all big, you know, kind of newer country stars now. So we bring this element of legitimacy to, uh, to the meetings and events industry, especially virtual now, uh, of we have lived the life. We've been on the arenas, and now you are getting this professional experience from people that have walked the walk and talked the talk. Excellent, thank you for that. And I know some of the, yours is a very unique idea for engagement as well. I, I've done a lot of the cooking and wine tasting and you know polling, and I've done even some song division, which is really exciting. Are there any other creative ideas out there that anybody has uh, engagement? And I'm going to open that up for anybody that wants to answer other than those things. Well, of course, I think um, starting a meeting with um, sending a gift to someone, Michelle. <laughs> so Helen's um, bringing this up. This is a great idea. So this is a you can get people excited before you even before the meeting. You could get have a, a very um, basket sent to them or a box sent to them that is branded. It could have the agenda in it. It could have all sorts of stuff. This is a vir virtual meeting survival kit. And this is the first time I'm gonna be getting into it. I'm gonna open it up now and kind of share the contents of it. But there's a number of ways to do this. I've gotten uh, logoed earbuds sent in advance. It doesn't have to be a costly thing, but it's just something to get people excited about. Open up this box. It's hard to see inside, but you can see I have some some goodies inside there. And so there's some snacks. There's some pens, some highlighters, a notepad, yeah, just to name a few of the items. And Helen, can you just speak a little bit to the different types of engagement pre-program that people could consider doing? And so for years, I've been telling planners that this is the, the best way to kick off a meeting. In, you know, in pre-COVID, pre, uh, pre people would come into a hotel room. They've been traveling by plane and train and car to get to your meeting. And what a great way to kick off your meeting is with a gift of any sort. So now you can send a gift, um, a virtual, the beginning of a virtual meeting. Um, so we could do a healthy snack mix. Um, we have uh, done, one of our, a new client reached out to us. They always had a campfire as part of their meeting. So we sent out s'mores kits so that every individual could still have their own little campfire at the end of the, the at the end of the event. Um, another one of our clients uh, did a barbecue. So they kind of interacted the cooking, what are you cooking and how are you cooking it and, and all that into a meeting. It's a great way to, to engage your attendees in a, in a meeting, especially virtually. And you can send them, you know, like I said, an agenda or you can send them some information. Maybe some of you that are wanting them to uh, pre-consider some questions 
you can send the questions in there. It's just a really great way to get everybody really started on that. And I know, Tim, you and I were conversing about what you just did. And I'm going to ask Alyssa to go ahead and roll that video because I'd like to start with that. And then I'll ask you some questions sure. about it. But this is a, a meeting that he did recently and which involves some engagement, pre-event engagement, as well as um, the as well as engagement uh, at the program. So go ahead and take a look. Well, welcome to the yeah. caffeine and well, conversation the portion caffeine of the LOSA's 2020 member uh, meeting. I'm Josh Boone, meeting. Executive I'm Director, Josh and I'll be your MC for today's director, meeting. Thank you for joining us. Each primary Velos member representative should have received a snazzy Velos mug like this one. I hope you have it in front of you and are sipping some coffee this morning. We included a bag of coffee to kickstart the meeting and the morning the right way, well, caffeinated. So let's raise our mugs in recognition of Southern California Edison for sponsoring today's event. Thank you, Edison yeah. and uh, Caroline, yeah. yeah. So now let's enjoy some tunes from Sacramento's own DJ John B, and we'll have some fun survey questions as we groove. Take it away, John. That's awesome. So thank you for that. And cheers, everybody. Cheers. We got you got your mug in hand. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and kick us off and tell us a little bit more about that whole experience, because I know I'm excited when I get something other than a bill in the mail. So or junk right. mail. <laughs> yeah. So this was this was a relatively small group. It was like a, a, a member meeting for this organization. That's essentially a, a trade group and this trade group. And so uh, we we wanted a way to make the members feel like they were still connected to each other. And this is obviously something that Helen is working on every day in terms of getting, uh, you know, getting folks to feel special when they open something in the mail or see it in the hotel room. And, you know, this was a, a relatively intimate meeting with 40 or 50 attendees and then some audience. And we wanted those panelists around the table, the, the members who were going to sit at a hollow square table in the real life meeting to feel like they were still connected and had kind of a touch point that they were all together. And so there were actually moments in that event where they all held their mugs up on camera, be like, look, you know, kind of we're in this together. Yeah. And then we added the DJ and, and basically called it a virtual coffee break. And so I think on the on the video, I, I lost sound a, a couple of times on that video. But but basically, we we opened the meeting with a DJ and with some polling questions and you just get people talking, get people chatting with each other and kind of, you know, caffeinated, you know, get them per perked up for the day and then basically rolled into the meeting kind of touch point that they were all together. And so, you know, uh, unlike Helen, uh, you know, sending folks special gifts is not my full time job, but it was something where I think we, we were able to get a lot of uh, touch point engagement, you know, kind of camaraderie by having everyone have a gift together and have that moment of hearing music like Benji was talking about. And it was really interesting just how people brought up throughout the meeting that like, oh, we, I've never been on a webinar with a DJ before. And there was a later meeting, a smaller group, they were like, where's the DJ on this one? You know, and so it was just something that really, I think both Helen and Benji know, um, both uh, gifts, a lot of, uh, a lot of engagement and, and connection point to people. They do, and it doesn't have to be long. It could be something that's just short and a, and a pick me up. So I just think it's uh, it, they're very helpful. And just like at a regular meeting, I mean, a lot of our meetings are going to be hybrid. It's not just um, virtual. So even at an in-person meeting, getting uh, something in advance, and especially the pre 
pre-communication with participants that are attending live now is more are in person is going to be more in critical than ever before. So it's not the first time they're arriving to know that masks are required or or what the room's going to look like when they get there and what their experience is going to be like. I'm finding that when we're engaging our clients now, we're actually showing videos of what that's going to look like from arrival to a property and and to their checking into the hotel, to getting to the meeting space, if the temperature checks are going to be provided. And to Lynn Henderson's point is um, one of the things that we're doing as well is taking temperatures, but we're also uh, best practices, including a little temperature check with a hand sanitizer and maybe a little, you know, throwaway mask in a kit when they arrive to the hotel so that they have that or even pre hotel and they can bring that with them for the number of days they're there so that they can take the temperature even before they go down to an actual meeting space. So there's a lot of best practices around um, around doing this. So Absolutely. Do, does anybody Michelle. have any? Yeah, go ahead, Helen. I was just going to say, I think and there's so much apprehension, you know, and people have been in quarantined and staying home for so long there's so much apprehension about going out and that kind of communication ahead of time is so important so people know what to expect yeah absolutely and i'll say um i had worked with wildly different lisa jennings the ceo over there and i work with them on a program for one of my pharmaceutical clients and it was a um, universal scavenger hunt called get to the point and it was so much fun i mean i had a blast in in actually in person in attending that and as i understand you've also now you do it uh, virtually can you talk a little bit about some of the options for engagement with your company absolutely so i think what makes our events wildly different hence the name is that as opposed to something that individuals are doing and being engaged on as a group on a screen our games allow people any size group can do it, but then they're breaking off into smaller groups of four to five people to actually interact one on one with each other. So at the end of the game, it's like, oh gosh, I had no idea Bob was so much fun or that Jane was so clever because they've spent 30 to you know 120 minutes, depending on the length of the game that you play with one another together where they're actually solving problems and doing creative exercises and communicating with one another. So we have everything from virtual escape rooms where they have to try and figure out what it is that they need to open on the screen that they're looking at. And as they're doing it, clues are opening up and they're working together to solve them in order to get a code that will allow them to pass from screen to screen to screen or a murder mystery activity where they are doing some fun trivia based things about being a detective, like answering questions about fingerprint blood work analysis. But then something opens up that reveals something that was found in a room in the manner where the murder was committed or something about one of the potential suspects so that they're working together to make guess as to who did it and with what and i just love that at the end of that those games really do give people a better sense for one another so it works from a team building aspect or just a simple networking let's get to know one another type of thing yeah i know i know what brought out the competitive nature in me i i really enjoy um <laughs> playing games and competing i've got to win so it, it was a lot of, of fun doing that it's really nice to see how a, a lot of companies have you know if you i know it's been overused but reimagined they have really added a bunch of services and gotten innovative you really have to think differently in today's environment and if you're doing it right you are thinking differently because this is not pre covid times and we really have to make sure that we're um we're careful about how we're we're doing it and i do think hybrids here to stay i do not think it's going away so this engagement conversation is really important there is um, a question about creative virtual swag bags um, that don't have to be mailed to attendees for events. Uh, any ideas from anybody on the panel on that? Merely, this is probably Lisa and Helen mainly that do those. A virtual swag bag. Hmm. And items that don't have to be mailed to attendees. So I, I'm thinking this is from Christopher and I, I'm thinking Christopher, I think you're talking about like maybe something to hand to them on site, which I think you can do something 
anything that you can send to them in the mail could be handed on site, correct? I had a thought, if, if you're talking about an, a virtual event or a hybrid event where you, you want something for your online attendees that maybe um, doesn't have to be mailed, what about something like a virtual background image? Or I mean, obviously it's, it's you know, it's, it's a very simple thing, but if you send folks, you know, a unified you know, virtual background image that they can all have the same background, and that's an easy kind of literally just sending them an email with, with the JPEG, you know? Well, yeah, he's saying, like, what, if, what about having a link to something that they can download? Now, I've seen that, if you were going to go that route. Yeah, I was. I mean, it's actually possible, right, to um, do something like an Amazon gift card, right, and then have people be going into their swag bag, which is kind of interesting. So as opposed to the traditional, oh, everybody's getting a branded Frisbee or something, maybe there's something that you can do for them like that, where they get to pick what's going to make their virtual work atmosphere a little bit bit more comfortable type of thing and they'll remember you because it was personalized for them yeah that's and they could, they could do a virtual um, treasure hunt or scavenger hunt so you know give them a list of things that they need to find in their own house and, and make that in part yeah. that's fantastic Christine with crow we have some meditation virtual downloads some fitness virtual downloads and things like that that's a great idea and I I think that's what they're saying, like about uh, downloading and, and just like clicking on a button for it. Other things was uh, somebody had mentioned a coupon, again, that you can redeem for either a gift or that they can redeem as a ticket to the show. So it gets it a little more exciting. There's a lot of different ideas that and things you can do around this. Let's talk a little bit and switch into food service because, you know, I think the rule of thumb for having these is about half. So if you normally have an eight-hour meeting, they're saying do it four hours. And less is more in this environment because, you, it's again, you have to keep everybody highly engaged. Um, are you guys doing anything creative about food for, you know, serving breakfasts or lunches? We, we saw the snacks that came in for, like, a break, but how are you handling the food feature? Anybody? So I personally okay. haven't done it, but I have had call if um, their organization is all in one spot, for instance, find a local caterer who can actually drop off a boxed lunch or a boxed breakfast that arrives um, at their doorstep and they'll do multiple deliveries at the same time. Um, we're doing things like getting uh, coupons for like a pizza company that is all across the United States. So they're like, hey, order your pizza, make sure it arrives on time so that while you're playing the game or doing the meeting, you're be you're able to snack with your people. That's the great. And there's a lot of companies, I'm sorry, Tim, just real quick. There's a lot of companies that are doing food delivery like Grubhub, but they're they're literally have come out of the COVID situation and they do a great job and they service countrywide. So one of the things is you could have food delivered, they can personalize the food. Again, you can actually do the food in with an agenda or a note to them. So there's a number of ways that you can go ahead and do that. Tim, go ahead and- That was gonna say a DoorDash or a Grubhub or a Postmates coupon will gift your online gift that can be delivered by email, so. That's Michelle, perfect. I've got something. Go ahead, Benji. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, so sometimes depending on who we are doing a session for, uh, for instance, one of our, our partners is, is Hard Rock Hotels. And we are in the, in the process of designing customized virtual experiences based on that location. So for instance, the Hard Rock Hotel, New Orleans, you know, it's gonna be all New Orleans themed. We're gonna be making beignets, you know, live, teaching people this is how you do it. So uh, there are ways to bring in the local flavor uh, and 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 bring that as a unique element to whatever virtual session uh, you have. More of a, a, a so people feel special that it's oh yeah this is my town they're doing our stuff. Love that. That's a really fantastic idea. Um, thank you, Benji, for bringing that up. There's somebody online that actually brought up uh, Korean brought up Dinable. I've never used them before, but that's a a company that addresses the issue with food delivery as well. So those of you that want to use that as a uh, as an option could consider that. There's food box pickup the day before, food and drinks that can be room temperature. They're saying craft beer, popcorn, dried fruits, mm -hmm. chocolate, et cetera. So there's a lot of different ideas uh, about um, the food service. Okay, let me go to um, Christine. Can you talk a little bit about what aspects of health 
that you focus on when you're doing like corporate meetings? Sure, sure, sure. absolutely. So with Crow Wellness Hub of Providers, so we focus on right now a lot of stress management. We have aromatherapy experts. So you were speaking about one of our popular home craft parties is we're sending essential oils with a kit uh, so everyone can experience uh, essential oils. Um, and we have a lot of fit sessions which translate well over virtually and a lot of our speakers, meditations, things like this. Perfect, thank you for that. And I think I'm gonna go to Tim, can you, Tell me how you made the trend, the in-person to virtual during COVID? Yeah, so you know, I think, you know, virtual events are not entirely new. You know, people have been doing webinars, you know, like this for a long time. I think, you know, virtual event being a primary component or a hybrid, you know, the virtual being a primary component of the event, I think is uh, a new, sort of reinvigorated focus due to COVID. So I had already been working with a lot of clients on webinar aspects or live streaming of in-person events. And so I think, you know, it's, it's a relatively uh, straightforward transition to go from an event that has a large online audience and a relatively small in-person audience uh, to being an all online audience and no in-person audience. And so, you know, kind of, you know, for every event, the balance between what's a webinar versus what's a broadcast and kind of that middle ground there. And I think there's there's also this new aspect, right? Because you, with hybrid, you're going to have people in person and you have people virtually. And I think one of the things one of the attendees is Jonathan Lease is asking is how do you engage online with the people on site to make the bring them into the process? Are there any creative ideas that you're doing, Tim, to do that? So a lot of my clients have already been doing large online audiences. Um, and so it's it's been almost more of a broadcast I mean, something where we have maybe a thousand people, thousand people in the room, but then watching online. So it's not necessarily that there's a ton of engagement between one of the 10,000 online viewers and one of the thousand people in the room, but you know, there's gonna be ways that we engage the online folks slightly differently from the in-person in folks. And so something like during the lunch break, there might be a web only Q and A session that has some you know questions from Twitter or from you know a Q and A system in the in the webinar platform, whereas uh, the the in person audience gets Q and A off off camera. If I may interject here, I know that we're starting to do quite a few hybrid games. In fact, we had our we had one just yesterday, and there's some people who are in the live environment, and then some people who are at home didn't feel safe coming out, and yet we were still able to put together a fun team building activity for them. So we're um, doing something, for instance, like a spy school. So the people at home are still on a team with the people in the virtual environment. They're connecting through their devices and the game. The people at home are solving the clues. They're like mission control, and they're revealing the answers for what the people in the virtual environment need to go find and do and maybe take a photo or video and submit it. So they're the agents in the field. And it really makes them feel like even though they're distant and having slightly different experiences, they're still able to bond together. That's a really great, uh, that's a really great point. And I, I do think that's a really critical issue in joining it. It's not, you have to try to find a way to make it more collaborative versus separate functions. But again, there's a lot more planning and conversation that has to go into all of this stuff that we're doing now. It's not just simply throwing a meeting together. It's a lot more strategic. Not that we weren't strategic before, but we have to be more strategic, more forward looking than we've ever been uh, in, the, in the past. So can you tell me a little bit, Lisa, about what virtual events have been most popular in this new well, for sure, it's been those virtual escape rooms and murder mysteries, and I think that's because people already understood what those were in a live environment. So to be able to that in a virtual environment, people are 
already intrigued and excited about what they're about to experience. But something else that's been very popular as well is a standard game. We want something that's custom for us. So we have a lot of clients coming to us saying, how do we weave our message in and make it engaging for our participants? So for instance, we had a pharmaceutical client who we took their training information about a drug, wove it into clues, and people had to use it to escape past the receptionist into the doctor's office, and then escape the doctor's office with a prescription for the drug. So things like that, people are great, there's standard stuff out there, but now how do I make it special for us? It, it used to be that people thought this was gonna pass over in a couple of months, so they were happy to do the standard thing, but now that they know it's probably gonna be for them, now they're really exploring how can we put our stamp on it. That's that's a really great point, and I do think. Yeah, I'll chime in real quick. Yeah, please. Um, Lisa, so a lot of what I would do is create around an event, and now that the real in-person events are no longer the the norm, you know, where virtual is becoming the norm, what from a theme standpoint? Wow, that's so, you know, it's so balanced around an idea, mm -hmm. whereas now your virtual, how do you bring that type of energy to the virtual environment? Well, I can only speak from our event perspective, but for our events, it, we do encourage people to make it themed, right? So if you're doing a manor house murder activity, people are getting dressed up, you know, with like fake mustaches That's and cool. dressing up as flappers and then they might have a background if they're on Zoom where you can customize it and they're choosing, you know, their, their scary looking background and um, just really feeling immersed. And, and we're not just going to play a game. We're like, okay, detectives, are you ready? A murder like has Your happened. voice is you in know? it. Your whole yes. attitude is kind of, okay. That's I do think once you get in it, it's like when I started the, uh, uh, the activity that I did over in Orlando, once you start getting in it, it's really exciting and everybody's getting it. It's just, it kind of brings everybody together. And I, I had a client that calls it mandatory fun. Um, so everybody needs to participate in it. And it's funny how when it starts off mandatory to get you participating, but once you start participating, you, even if you had an option to get out, you still would want to complete it. Just part of the collaboration and all that. But tying that, online is definitely challenging and those are some great ideas for doing that and along with theme what do you think about using you know your talents of the creative side of it to theme those things together i think you have to from a start point to an end point so it's a customer experience at that point it's almost like you're buying a product at a store you have to think when i first touched this customer to the last point of contact what is that what is that relationship and how can you make it feel significant and memorable, you know, um, and design and, and just creativity in itself will, will help you get through that. And I, and I think if you, go ahead. Uh, I think if you can create themes around the meeting, um, we, this, we did a barbecue box for a company that was a dermatology company and they had like a hot sauce because they are, um, one of their uh, products had to do with heat. So they coordinated that. And they That's were cool. also doing, uh, yeah, we're working on a virtual bourbon tasting. So uh, <laughs> that, you know, if you can design your, of your product and your gift is with the theme or a sponsor or the brand, um, you know, it's really important to know about, know, know what's going on at the meeting so that you can coordinate all that. And I would say that's a, a good point of coordination. I think you need to coordinate with all your vendors, whether that's your design agencies, your your fulfillment and gift partners, your you know uh, contributors, and your production agencies and, and production partners. Because you know all those pieces go together. And I think you know having everyone together on the call, having your virtual environment branded, skinned, and the broadcast workflow match the needs of your event and making sure you know we can get the fidelity of the songs and the quality of the virtual games through that broadcast platform are all critical absolutely absolutely okay i'm going to remind the audience please ask your questions i think i'm down to two of them that are left right now so if you could please this is all about you directing our conversation and if it's going well let us know it's going well if you have questions that are 
still outstanding, please put them in there um, so that we're able to address uh, all of your hot issues. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to Helen on this one and ask, when you're being creative, how? what's the creative process in you putting together a gift uh, for the, the gifts that go out for a meeting? Well, we work with the meeting planner to find out the purpose of the meeting and who's attending the meeting. Um, maybe any past history, they've done these kinds of meetings in the past, what have they done, um, who's attended, and um, where is it being held? Sometimes we can create a gift. Um, someone mentioned New Orleans. We can kind of create a gift for, for the event and where it's being held. Um, time of the year, you know, right now it's summer. We, we've, we have great summer gifts. We do a lot of themes on our website. We have summer gifts, spring gifts, and of course the holidays, but we've done 4th of July and Memorial Day. So depending on what time of the year you're doing your event, you can create a um, gift for that. Um, budget, of course, is important. And then brand awareness is a, is the, um, this, do they have sponsors that they want to highlight? And do they want to highlight their own brand? So there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of working with the, the meeting planner on all those issues. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And I'm, they're asking for uh, what is the recommendation for a good time balance for audience engagement with these types of games and games or activities that we're doing um, so the meeting be engagement or a small piece of it. And I'm going to, I'm going to speak to my experience with it. You, you need to be have engagement throughout. I'm saying it starts with the PowerPoint presentation or whatever presentation you're given your written document needs to be engaging. And so the other aspects of it, your entertainment pieces, just like in a in-person event, it's an aspect of it that's strategically used to keep people in in your session, keep their mind, make them mindful. This is, is really important, which is what we're talking about here. So um, anybody else have any comments on that question about a good balance for audience engagement versus entertainment? Uh, I completely agree with you, Michelle. I, I think it has to be engaging to be have your segments lined up, bam, 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 and just keep it moving. You know, no one wants to sit talking head for you know any more than five or six minutes. You got to keep it, keep keep the program uh, uh, diverse enough to where you you're okay. We just did this now. Here, be be excited for this part. And if the host is excited, they're going to be excited, and that translates. That that really does. I always I say, say know your audience, right? So for our games, we have everything from 30 minute long game games. And there's some people when you mentioned two hours, they're like, oh my gosh, no, we'd never be able to hold their attention. And they probably know their group, right? And that's fine. And others who are like, well, do you have a longer game? Because our people really get into it. So I think it's important to know your group um, for sure. And I would say on the content versus engagement balance. I think, you know, uh, Michelle, you mentioned keeping the engagement activities throughout the event and, you know, like songs or music, things like that. If you can get that as, you know, introductions for speakers and breaks, but also uh, to, to another point that, that we made earlier that your presentations have to be shorter online. You just can't have that hour long PowerPoint and, and expect people to pay attention and, and really learn from that the same way that you might get away with in person. Right. And with a gift and do maybe five and have them sealed and make sure that people don't open them until like one part, one seminar or one event or one part of the uh, uh, meeting. Yeah. A great open, open, any open box today. Sorry, Helen, a great best practice anytime you're transitioning content, throw in a question, a quick game, a quick improv, anything. You got Something to keep the engagement going. Something else I want to point out that I think is important is a lot of people are planning um, engagement activities for after hours, and sometimes that's not the wisest thing to do in this day and age, right? Everybody's working from home. Their kids are staring at them saying, gosh, you've been working all day on the computer, mom, or the husband's like, oh, could we you know, maybe have dinner together tonight? It's almost harder because you're not function. So... I like to encourage a lot of my people, you know, maybe hold it during office hours, but towards the end of the day so that you're wrapping up the day with it. That's a great point, too. Dan, did you, were you going to say something? I think there's a 
a fun way to do an accountability test as well, where some presentations that I've done in the past, you've hidden certain things, almost like your scavenger hunt, but they're actually in the presentation. At the end, is it worth the $100 gift card? What was the color of the square on slide two? You know, <laughs> because I want to know that you were paying attention. I want to know that you were engaged, but I'm also not going to tell you about it. You know, like I, I, I think those types of treatments are going to be something that we look forward to, you know, in the near future. Even using a QR code as something like take out your phone. I know it's right next to your computer. I know it's right next to you. And quickly, you know, take a screenshot of this QR code. Now it unlocks something else. So it is, you know, more or less it's engagement. So I love that idea. That's fantastic. Very creative. Um, when we're doing these these virtual events now, even hybrid, there are some people think it's just pressing a button to do it, but there's a whole bunch that goes in. I mean, we have a whole crew working on this in the background to make it go successful. Um, so just from your guys' perspective, uh, Tim, I'm, what are the different positions that are involved in doing the virtual uh, on your end of it? Yeah, so it kind of depends on the scope and scale, whether it's more webinar style or more broadcast style, but we'll almost always have, you know, broadcast engineer who's, you know, controlling, switching the production. Uh, we'll often, if we have a broadcast that has multiple guests, we'll have almost a virtual camera operator who's bringing the guests in, connecting them, doing audio checks with them, and making sure that everything's working before they go on screen. And we'll usually have a producer who's working with the client and with the technicians, kind of bridging that gap. And we'll usually have basically an intercom channel, some sort of separate conference call with client facing staff and technical staff to have that sort of communication behind the scenes of what's going on, queuing folks, you know, getting ready to count talent in to go on camera and that sort of thing. Yeah, so, and it, it is definitely a whole new, um, well, I mean, I know we've been doing these for a while. I don't, I have not done as many of them as, I, as I'm doing now ever, um, but there is a whole mindset around it being a much more simple process to do, but there's a lot of stuff to go in that if you're gonna be doing it right. So thank you for, for bringing that up. One of the questions is how do you elevate the production value of your presenters? And an example is like um, how they appear on screen, on screen or a speaker's kit. Yeah, and so, I mean, part of it is making sure that you have your coffee, everybody has, it said that's yeah. on, on the call, make sure everybody has their coffee or the tea, and so we have them um, available, but also just the presented, we did a mini get on, let's make sure we connect, let's look at our backgrounds, so make sure that the lighting's good. I, You guys, if I could show you my um, background right now, you'd see I have, a couple different camera angles going. I have a couple ring lights I bought off Amazon. One was like 50 bucks on Amazon, you guys. Got to check it out. It's really cool. And um, they have different settings on it that help light it because you want to have a light coming from behind the camera. So I think having those things, you could send them at advance. It would help make things look better. But also during the rehearsal will help you fine tune how to have things set up. I also have a USB, professional USB microphone that looks like a... a Elvis Presley, the, the big Elvis Presley handheld ones. Um, that's a, a lot of fun. That was like 20 bucks on uh, Amazon. So there's a lot of great things and resources you can use to do that. Does anybody else have any other ideas along those lines? Go yeah, ahead, Tim. So I can say one thing that a lot of folks are doing for higher profile events is, is uh, sending equipment to presenters. So whether that's a kit that's small enough to fit in a box that can be shipped, that's like a laptop and an external camera and a light and a, a USB lavalier microphone, or whether it's as complex as sending a crew out to set something up, wipe it down, mm -hmm. and then leave the room while the talent's on camera. But depending on both the talent's comfort level and your budget and your scope and, and the, the, the criticalness of having great video, you might think about whether your production partners can either send or bring equipment to presenters and kind of get things you know, set up for success. Perfect. Anybody else have comments on that before I go into the next panelist question and the next question for us? So it's a, uh, they're asking for the length. I kind of covered what my take of this has been. It's half. They're asking the typical length for an entire webinar. What should it be? When should you take breaks? And I know for mine, if it's an eight hour day, I'm doing it in four hours. 
I can spread it out in multiple days, shorter time frames, and every about hour and a half to two hours, I'll incorporate a quick five minute, which we're going to do with Christine in a little bit, kind of a a, um, a way to engage or or really and alive in your brain, if you will, to, to bring you back into focus so that you can be fully present when it starts. Does anybody have any ideas around that? We do some, oh, uh, so I was going to say, we, we do uh, fun energizers where we might do a, a, a brief version of the rock and roll game show that we uh, did at the beginning of this webinar, just, you know, maybe five minutes of a, a power game show segment. We also do uh, this program that's called uh, Insta Hits which are instant songs written about people. So, you know, during this five or 10 minute break, uh, we will say, does anyone want to volunteer to have a song written about them right now? And there's always somebody who says, and so what we do is we live interview them. Uh, we say, what's your dog's name? And what's your favorite food? And, uh, you know, what are your hobbies? Little things like that. And then uh, we usually engage, have two songwriters there. So one guy steps away for three minutes and he writes them a song on the spot while we lead them through a fun little icebreaker. And then three minutes later, he comes back and he performs this song about that person on the spot, a verse and chorus. So it's like a little musical magic trick and it, it snaps everybody, uh, you know, out of the, 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 you know, the Zoom fatigue or you know, whatever you want to call it. And it just wakes them back up. And so then when the presentation, uh, when the presentation kicks back on again, they're alive and they're ready to, to absorb the message. And Benji, I've been on a couple of years where you guys have done that, and I was so excited. We like the you've taken the information from the meeting, like something like this that you were on, and you actually created a song from it at the end. That was the of, and I'm sorry to say, but of the entire meeting I was on, I was most interested in getting that song from you guys. I was like, how do I reach them to get that song? <laughs> yes. Well, it. it you're absolutely right because it, it 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 creates anticipation. You know, you want to hang around, you want to pay attention because you know that this guy is writing this song, summing the whole thing up. You you want to know how he's going to do it and what it's going to sound like. So that that the summary song uh, program has been really successful. Yeah, I, I really I literally love it. I'm hoping and I, you guys maybe do a little miniature one off this thing at the end of it that we can send out to everybody based on the content. That would be really exciting too. Uh, hint, sure. hint. <laughs> yeah, okay. put you on the spot. All right, I now I know. This is a very um, casual, collaborative. We did not rehearse. I'm putting them all on the spot right now. Okay. Um, okay. So one, uh, somebody's asking about appearances, um, colors, maybe styles that you can make things look more professional online. And I know in my experience, they it's they're saying not to wear whites or or blacks and just wear like nice colors that are that are not too bright, but also not too muted. And a simple background, they say to avoid having any type of windows without the windows being closed. I think that's mainly from stuff that may be flying by or walking um, by so you don't get it. Or there's a little bit of a glare, like in Daniel and yours right now, you can see a little bit of a glare coming in from there. And so that's why they say to try to avoid some of the windows that are in there. Also, the, the, set, the placement of your camera, it shouldn't be that you're looking down. And I know a lot of people do do that, but your camera should be a little bit elevated so you're looking up. It's a better angle. Uh, so that's, a, that's another um, tip and trick. Does anybody else, and you can raise your computer up by putting something underneath the stand, but does anybody else have any other kind of, best practices around making yourself look more professional when you're presenting like this? Ask your kids. <laughs> uh, Michelle, I, I, Michelle, I think you nailed it with the angle of your camera. You want to be looking up at your camera. It's never a flattering angle coming from the bottom. Uh, and if you're if you're on camera a lot, uh, this is, you know, this is a sheet, but it's hung over my green screen. And green screens, you know, when you project a virtual background onto a green screen, it just makes it so much cleaner. You know, there's you're not going to be disappearing into your green screen like like if, if you don't or you're not going to be disappearing into your background like you would if you didn't have one. And like you mentioned before, a lighting kit is huge. Uh, I know you mentioned those those round circle lights and those do well for up close. Um, Amazon has uh, a lighting kit for ninety nine dollars. Um, and I, Maybe I could even show it to you now, but it looks like this. You know, it's this big. Uh, lighting box if you will that uh is super easy to set up it's plug and play you just plug it in and turn it on but it adds a whole lot and it comes with two of them so you can kind of left and right angle it so it lights yeah. you up that combined with the green screen uh it just adds that level of professionalism 
What's the brand on the one you bought? You know, uh, you can give me a minute and I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. If you can Let look at that. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I told you guys I'm putting you all on the spot. Okay, I got it. It's, it's called Fovitech, F-O-V-I-T-E-C, Fovitech. And it's Perfect. on Amazon. It's 99 bucks, and it's awesome. Those are the tangibles I'm looking for. Thank you so much. Anybody else have feedback before we move this topic? Okay. Somebody's asking, um, so Benji, somebody's asking if you need feedback on doing something like that. I've, I've not done it. I've been on one where I've seen it done. And um, and it, it, it's not, I think everybody's, I, I, laughter is really great. I love laughing. And I, I, my, my big, biggest thing is the music. I love music. I love it in life. I've gone to live music um, concerts and I've done everything. I go see live music whenever I can. I love music. So that's my thing. I, I am not as much of a fan as the comedian I have work. It, it does work just like any other activity. Go ahead, Tim. I would say just a, a caveat with the comedian, um, you know, comedy doesn't really work very well in a one directional, uh, you know, they really need response from the audience to, to feed off of that. And so I would say a comedian is going to lend itself better to an, a, a format, whatever meeting webinar technology you're using where the comedian can see and hear the audience where they get that feedback, they can play off of things the audience is doing. And so whether that's, you know, putting the comedian in front of a big monitor where they can see everyone or, you know, just making sure that the comedian gets that feedback live because comedian playing to a an empty room is uh, sometimes hard to watch. <laughs> yeah, that's why um, Saturday Night Live, I don't know if you guys watch it at all. It's, I, I love watching that show and I um I, they don't have it on very much. They tried to do it in this, you know, COVID environment. And it was just really awkward to have everybody working from different places to bring him in. So you have to have somebody really good in order to be able to do that type of engagement. I've, I've yet to hear one that I would qualify as that. Christine, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that I'm offering some of the 10 best virtual improv games to run in the virtual wellness tips and tricks. Um, some of these, you, you can you can run them yourself, or as you said, they're absolutely professionals um, to run them. But it, it is a great engager. Thank you, guys. And then somebody was saying they're on a they were on a Zoom meeting with six people screen, but forty were watching, and they never got to see anybody and hear them, and they were wanting to know why. Is it possible to see anybody? Tim, go ahead and take that. Yeah. So um, Zoom has sort of two. Uh, product meeting in the Zoom webinar. So a Zoom uh, meeting is where everyone has the ability to turn their cameras on and off at, you know, at their own pace. The Zoom webinar, there's panelists who are able to share their camera and attendees who can't. I don't know whether you were on a meeting or a webinar, but you know, in a Zoom meeting, any of these meeting platforms, anyone can choose to turn their camera and microphone off and just watch. And so it may have been just that in that meeting, what, it may have been a webinar where we're were just in their listen only mode or it may have been a meeting where folks had just chosen to turn their cameras off. And that's that's an engagement thing is, you know, are you are you encouraging folks to have their cameras on and like on and engage and that, you know, comes down to some of these activities, interactive things where, you know, getting them to sort of encourage them strongly to, to be present at the meeting is is part of it. Yeah, and I was somebody was saying like doing a tech check would be really important for that as well. Anybody yeah, else have any speakers? speakers. So um, there's a, internet speed. Let's talk about that a little bit because so you have to you have to talk to people when they're doing their presentation. Like even on ours today, we've shown some videos and there's if you have pop ups, if you don't have your pop ups enabled, when the video comes up, you won't be able to see or hear anything on that video. So really letting your the audience know about you know, ahead of time in those housekeeping notes about making sure the block ups aren't popped, making directly into your modem, if possible, because if your internet, you're not, if you're, you have internet connectivity, you may not see anybody, you may not hear them accurately. We talked about that element and about hearing, about having uh, pods in your ears. That, that's the best way to hear and be heard are the pods. So just those are some best practices. Anybody else have anything else around the Wi-Fi conversation or ways to handle that? Okay. Well, Perfect. I will say that if your Wi-Fi 
if you can always usually use your phone as a hotspot. So it's always great to have whatever app you're using on your computer also be on your phone so that should you go down and not be able to use that, you can just rejoin on your phone and you're able to, you know, instantly be connected or just connect as a hotspot from your laptop. And I will say when, when you know, working with, you know, your presenters and panelists, um, I think as, as an organizer or as a, as a technical professional, we always need to have a backup plan. What do we do if one speaker goes down, what do we do if the moderator goes down? And just having a plan of who's going to jump on and, and you know, sort of, uh, you know, fill the time until we get people back. Whose job is it to reconnect people, to reach out to them? You know, what is the backup plan? What is the graceful degradation to just having somebody call in on the phone? Just having that plan of action in advance gives you a lot of sense of security that you already know what you're doing when something goes wrong. It's a great point, Tim. We always have a co-host on everyone as well, because then if mine goes down, everybody isn't kicked out, the co-host is able to pick up that duty. Absolutely. I've got one more point to add to that. Uh, you can buy these uninterruptible power supplies that you can run your uh, the power source for your modem into. That way, if you have a power outage, uh, your modem's not going down. Perfect. And I know Brian Stewart had just brought up that Wi-Fi hotspots can also be provided. That's a really great idea that I hadn't thought about before. So that's awesome. Thank you, Brian. And certainly if you're shipping equipment to presenters, you can do a Wi-Fi hotspot or you can do some kind of, you know, backup solution that, that bridges their home internet connection with a cell connection. So you have that automatic failover. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to get ready to um, do a five engagement techniques that create an energy from Christine. Um, but before we do that, I want to ask real quick, Helen, um, what should the budget be for shipping to send a special engagement gift to a bunch of attendees, about a thousand people that they're shipping to? How do we, how do they go about creating a budget for that? Either Lisa or Helen, uh, when you're sending those out. Well, you, they can just, if they have some time via USPS, if they, um, uh, our FedEx ground, and um, the budget will depend on the kind of gift that they want to send. So it could run from 10 to, you know, $30. So it depends on what the size of the gift that they want to send, but, um, and how much time they have. Lisa, you have anything to add to that? No, no, I actually don't ship gifts. Um, my clients will do them in conjunction with my events, but I don't take sure. Okay, perfect. Christine, they're saying um, offering a virtual yoga workout for attendees early in the morning prior to the conference starting. Do, do you do anything like that? And does that usually work? Yes, absolutely. We've done it pre-recorded as well as live. 15 minute sessions, 30, 45, an hour, absolutely. We even have um, a client that we sent. Um, it was a small amount. Um, so when it's a small amount of attendees, we, we will do the shipping. But um, yes, it, it worked very well. Okay, I'm gonna let you kick us off and bring us back into our being mindful and focused. <laughs> and ready, ready for you. Well, I wanna touch on a point because I felt like there was a question asked boosters. So just really quick, um, a quick energy booster. If you feel like you've just had a long speaker, some PowerPoint, counting down from 10 to one and actually have up from their seat, 10 to one, like you're, you're feeling like you're blasting off, gradually raise the energy. It's quick and you can use that anytime. Doing any physical movement. I know that we're, we're in our seats all the time. If you can use to get up on their feet and move, it's going to push them into a peak state. So what I'm going to share with you right now are a few quick techniques from our Be Well games. Our Be Well games were virtual, and now we've taken it uh, Be Well interactive. So the first technique, join me. Bring your hands up. What we're going to do is take in breath in and out our nose 10 times. If you're familiar with yoga, this is the fire breath technique. So join me right now. Excellent, all right. So <laughs> what you do several rounds and several sets of that, you are heating up your internal energy and your internal fire that's 
going to boost the energy up. All right. Our next one, I mentioned a movement. Okay. So a lot of us are having some carpal tunnel syndrome right now. So I'm going to invite you to bring your hands out and squeeze your hands as much as you can for five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. Shake it out. Shake it out. Move. All right. I know we're sitting down. Okay. Next one, smile for me. All right, excellent. Now, I'm gonna invite you to drop your gaze or even close your eyes and use your power of imagination and think to yourself, I am happy until you actually smile. So tell yourself, I am happy. I feel so much joy. Continue this mantra over and over and over until you eventually smile. Well done. All right. So our next technique, we're going to do a quick laughter exercise. It's important right now because laughter will reduce our stress hormones and our stress hormones impact our immune system. All right. So laughter is incredibly important right now. So there are three laughter sounds. Do them with me. The first one, we become Santa Claus and say, ho, 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 Third one, by your head, say he 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 your body still experiences the benefits of increased oxygen, lowering blood pressure. It boosts your immunity. So one last quick uh, laughter exercise. We're going to wave and laugh. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. That was awesome. And that gives us all some ideas of what we can do to kind of keep our, bring ourselves focused and just make us more present in what we're doing. I always say you can't expect anybody to be more excited about what you're talking about or what you're doing than you are. So this is, this is a great presentation. We're going to get ready to wrap up. So in wrap up around and ask each one of you your best practice or tip for the audience. And then I'm going to end with Benji doing the song he's written for us. Thank you. And while he's writing that, I'm going to ask Alyssa to put up uh, the slide with everybody's contact information, their names, all of that, so that we have that up with their LinkedIn profile link. Everybody on the line today, please feel free to connect with any one of us. We're all in this together. We're happy to be a resource and answer any questions you have. We're also happy to to work with you if you guys um, want to reach out to them and hire them. They're all for hire and uh, would be eager to have your business and um, be able and also to answer any of the questions you have aside from the business. Uh, we'll, we will all rise together in this as we collaborate and, you know, we, we stay connected. So please join us. I also want to remind you for next Thursday, we have three of these left for the end of August. We're going back to the topic of live meetings updates 2020 and beyond um, where we're talking about having in-person meetings some of your questions today had to do with in-person meetings and i intentionally did not answer those because today's was more about attendee engagement around both in person and um uh, virtually but c combining those our in-person live events we'll be able to talk to you and literally show you firsthand how we're doing those events what they look like We'll show you uh, diagrams, pictures, and we'll, um, we'll answer all of your burning questions. Again, these meetings are driven by your questions. So it's all about you guys, the audience. So thank you for being on here today and joining us. So don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss Benji's song, and you definitely don't want to miss our best practices or tips. Um, I'm going to kick us off and have Christine. I'm going to start with you giving your 
best practice or a tip for everybody moving forward? Sure, absolutely. And I do have a free resource for everyone that lists a number of them, but main best practice movement, get people getting into a peak state. By Thank you for that. Lisa Jennings, go ahead. Yes, I would definitely say to include something fun and interactive, whether it's five minutes or an entire game. And it, you don't have to hire one of us. You can do that yourself, right? So one of my favorite games is the toilet paper game, which fits in quite apropos during the pandemic, where you tell people to grab a roll of toilet paper and take what they need. And they're just looking at you like, I don't understand what you mean. And you're like, just take what you need. And then you reveal after they did it that for every square they took, they have to share one thing about themselves and you can push them off into a meeting room so that they network with one another if you have a larger group so it doesn't take forever. Perfect. Okay, Tim. This is not something we talked about really today, but I think it's it's an engagement best practice is making sure that your events both in person and online are accessible to everyone. So making sure that your in person events are accessible to people with physical disabilities and that your events online are accessible to people with all sorts of access needs in terms of how they're accessing the content and feel free to reach out to me later online if you have questions about making online events accessible. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. Helen. So I would say be creative. I mean, we had so many great ideas today, but there are so many things that you could do with your meetings and um, you can use our website as a resource. I mean, we have a whole section on meeting gifts that I think that's how Michelle found us um, in the first place. But there are so many things that you that can help you engage with your attendees and uh, your participants in any virtual meeting. Thank you, Helen. Dan. I would say allow your presentation content to breathe. Um, allow some space in between content pieces and just use color as, an, as a basic indicator. Keep it simple. Thank you so much to our panelists and audience for joining us today. This video has been edited and did not include a fun team building we did with Song Division at the beginning where we broke up into breakout sessions to discuss challenges we are all facing. Benji from Song Division is coming back on now to share a song he created during our team building session and based on our conversations. This is such a great team building idea and we hope you gain some other valuable resources to help you move forward. Thank you again and take it from here, Benji. At home, uh, again, I'm Benji with Song Division. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, it's just Benji at songdivision.com, B-E-N-J-I. So here is your song that I wrote seven minutes ago, the debut, here we go. Hey! Oh yeah. Today we came together to learn how to engage. Now we're all in a brand new world and virtuals a new ball game. From sending people packages to playing online games. We're learning best practices so we can make it great. So Thanks, Meet Insights Pro, for bringing us all here. We got in touch, we learned so much amidst this crazy year. From backup plans to Wi Fi, to lighting kids and more, we gave it all we got to make virtual rock. Yeah. We're gonna make virtual rock, yes we are, yes we are. Let's sing it one more time. With Thanks Made Insights Pro for bringing us all here. We got in touch, we learned so much amidst this crazy year. From backup plans to Wi-Fi, to lighting kits and more. We gave it all we got to make virtual rock. That's right. To make virtual rock, it's gonna rock, gonna rock, gonna rock tonight. Gonna make virtual rock.